Sports games occupy an interesting place in the gaming world. Commercially, some of them are very successful. Given the combination of ever-increasing realism in games and the duopoly of EA and 2K on the market, it does make sense. However, these games sometimes aren't so critically well received by the wider and perhaps more hardcore gaming community. In my opinion, the main reasoning behind this is that some sports games follow an inherently limited and emulative structure, which can perhaps be ostracising to people who aren't intimately familiar with the sport in question. Let's take the FIFA games as an example, right? FIFA is, for better or for worse, on a constant mission to minimise the gap between video game-based restriction and real-world football. This means that with every iteration, there are subtle developments which edge us ever closer to realism, perhaps sometimes at the expense of our enjoyment. I can't imagine properly trying to get to grips with FIFA if I wasn't already well acquainted with the sport, for example. I mean, arcadey kind of games do exist in this sphere. There's Super Mario Strikers and maybe even Rocket League being examples of making football simple and easy to access. But with the cost of distancing themselves from the sport itself, it's so hard to find that happy medium between realistic and approachable. Golf Story, however, does this perfectly. So let's give you some info, right, if you don't know anything about this. Golf Story is a Switch title released by Sidebar Games, a small Australian indie developer and, as the title suggests, is a game about golf, but it's also a story. You can see what they've done there. Golf Story is best described as a golf RPG, which might sound a bit odd at first, but it actually really works. One of the developers was asked in a Nintendo Q&A about the thought process behind this combination, and they said, I'm very partial to story mode, especially in games where they don't belong, such as sports or karting games. Story mode isn't actually, well, necessarily, the most outlandish idea in reference to sports games. A lot of them offer career modes or some other way of integrating a sort of narrative into your experience with the game. But Golf Story does take this to a new level. Anyway, what I want to talk about primarily in this video, a few minutes in, is how exactly Golf Story surmounts its biggest hurdle, that hurdle being making golf interesting to people who have no interest in or knowledge of the sport. It all comes down to this, right? Golf Story simply adds ease of access and humour to a sport which is not best known for those traits, without compromising its integrity and complexity. Now, before any golf fanatics hit me with a hefty diatribe in the comments, let me explain what I mean when I say that golf is inaccessible, because I'm not trying to slander golf as a sport. The problem is that for a lot of people, golf is not the most easily approachable thing for a variety of reasons. One example I want to go into is that it requires kind of expensive, equipment-based investment for any sort of long-term enjoyment. All you need for football is a ball, really, and anywhere with open space. Golf's not like that. Golf is hard to play casually, and if you want to take it seriously, there's a lot of kit you need, like clubs. There are woods, irons, wedges, all with different purposes in different situations. Let's imagine a situation. If you get yourself in a bunker, which you'll do when you're starting off because golf is hard, you'll be most likely wanting to use a wedge to get out of that dilemma. There are pitching wedges, gap wedges, sand wedges, lob wedges. In this instance, you'd want to use a sand wedge, or maybe a lob wedge. When you know what you're doing, this is all intuitive, but without being already acquainted with the difference between certain clubs, it can feel absolutely overwhelming. The same goes for knowing the difference between a 3-wood and a 5-wood, say. I'm hardly an expert, but it seems to be mostly to do with loft and distance. But apparently you can also replace a 5-wood with a 2-iron, which is apparently more difficult to hit, but it keeps the ball down more. But then again, you could argue that it doesn't have the versatility of a 5-wood. If you're not into golf, I hope you're kind of confused at this, because that's pretty much the point I'm trying to make here. You can have 14 clubs all in all, and you need to pick very specifically what works for your game. And that can be a kind of intimidating prospect. Anyway, the point is that equipment is confusing, and learning the ins and outs of it, not to mention its acquisition, is a challenge. It can almost feel like there's both a paywall and a lot of jargon behind you really getting to grips with and enjoying the sport. The same can be said for the underlying concepts behind golf, like the scoring system, the myriad rules, the etiquette, which we'll get onto more in a bit, by the way. It does sound harsh, but without a patient helping hand, golf can feel like a very unapproachable sport. I want to bring up Golf Story now to explain exactly how it overcomes this issue of accessibility, and a lot of it comes down to pacing and design. Golf Story has a fantastic difficulty curve, and intelligently uses the UI and the gameplay to teach you the game's mechanics, and in turn the intricacies of the sport. By using easy-to-understand visual cues to denote the power differences between the clubs and external factors such as wind and slope, the game strikes that perfect balance between learning by showing and learning by doing. Intelligently using the RPG formula, pretty much every side quest in the game is golf-oriented, even if it seems like it shouldn't be, and these side quests help you reach a high level of finesse and understanding, teaching you the mechanics little by little. They're just lessons, really, disguised as something else. You earn experience and money for completing them, and the money goes on new clubs and equipment, the experience goes towards upgrading your stats, it's classic RPG fare. Another thing is that, as dumb as it sounds, the game really takes advantage of the fact that it's a game to help teach you. It does something I really, really like in games like this, which is, for the most part, not punishing mistakes and experimentation. That undoubtedly has its place in some games, but I think it would be off-putting. Putting? It's a, it's a golf joke, it doesn't matter. For a beginner to implement that here, it's so much easier to familiarise yourself with the nuances of things like wind mechanics, spin and club choice, when there's no penalty for finding your feet. 
I'm not saying real golf is necessarily unforgiving, but it does come down partly to real world resources here. Golf Story does not teach you how to play actual golf, but it does enough to give you a pretty decent understanding of the sport, and perhaps an interest of outside the game, whilst also providing enough depth and variety to interest people who are already well acquainted with the sport. Golf Story is, at its core, a really good golf simulator, even though 2D putting is proper dodgy. But I think the thing that gets the most right in terms of emulating real golf is the importance of practice. You get so many opportunities to learn the particular features of each club and each possible shot, and honestly, it never really feels like work. It puts you in an environment where a sport as overwhelming and complex as golf is no longer intimidating, and that deserves credit. The other thing I brought up earlier is humour, and I mean that word in a pretty broad sense. I'm not saying that there can be no humour or levity in golf, but it is a pretty serious sport, in particular in terms of the rules and etiquette. So it's time for a quick history lesson now, get your jotters out. Um, golf as we know it today has its roots mostly in Scotland. St Andrews is often cited as being the home of golf, and in Edinburgh you can find literary evidence of there being courses in Brunsfield, Musselburgh, and Leith as far back as the 17th century, and evidence of the sport being played at all as far back as the 15th century. It was in 1744 when the first golf club slash society was formed, originally called the Gentlemen Golfers of Leith, and later rebranded the Honourable Company of Edinburgh Golfers, a much less pretentious name, and with it, the first ever set of golf rules. Now, a decade later in 1754, these rules were restructured and codified by the St Andrews Golfers, now more commonly known as the Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St Andrews, and now together with the United States Golf Association, or USGA, they still oversee the rules in a rulebook they modify and re-release every few years called The Rules of Golf. A lot of names, wasn't it? Well done, you. So, golf is not necessarily a stagnant sport, and it has made many positive and inclusive changes since the first inception of the rules, but there are still some things which play into that inaccessibility from before. One example of such an archaism being the Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St Andrews we just talked about, one of the world's foremost clubs, only allowing women to become members in 2014. Whether it's the case or not, it's easy to see golf as a boys club, or as posh and snobbish, and stringent golf etiquette can negatively hamper the social identity of the sport. A lot of rules and etiquette are just basic manners, like cleaning up after yourself on the course, and taking other players into account, which is obviously a good thing, but to run counter to that, I want to bring up something called urban golf, like a refashioning of golf, which to quote Wikipedia, is seen by many a social commentary on the nature of golf and its traditional opinions and attitudes, considering golf pompous, dogmatic, and quite often inaccessible, and so on. It might be too presumptuous a statement, but it could be argued that golf takes itself too seriously. You know what doesn't take itself too seriously? Golf Story. Nice segue. This game has such a good sense of humour, the writing is incredibly clever and witty, and this ingenuity injects so much life and personality into its portrayal of the sport. Remember, this is all about getting people interested, using golf as a vehicle for RPG goodness, and as a result making golf enjoyable to people who couldn't really care less about golf. It's worth noting that although the game doesn't take itself too seriously, it does wholeheartedly respect the sport. The attention to detail in the golf mechanics, as well as the care taken in the world building throughout the whole experience, everything comes together to display an affection for golf which is frankly infectious. The game uses smart little techniques to draw you in and persuade you that this golfing world is worth being in. My favourite example of this is actually the way that the speech bubbles and text are manipulated to convey tone and humour. I think this is genuinely fantastic, and I'm not sure I can think of any other games that use a similar system to such great effect. If you look around online, you'll find some people comparing this style to that of Earthbound, which is a pretty astute comparison. Golf Story finds a fantastic niche in the modern RPG market, harkening back to the rustic and old-fashioned charm of older games, but combining that with a fresh, entertaining, and above all, contemporary feel. In this game, golf and comedy, which verges on absurdity at points, go absolutely hand in hand. It completely breaks apart any preconceived notions of golf's staleness or inaccessibility. And actually, at one point, it directly addresses this. I'm not going to show it on screen, I'm only using footage from the first two or three hours of the game to try and keep as much of the video spoiler free as possible, but there's an area later on in the game called Tidy Park, which is easily my favourite, and it's a tongue in cheek parody of everything I was speaking about in the previous section. It's handled so, so well. Anyway, I, um, I guess that leads me to my closing statements. Uh, to put a personal spin on it, I actually really like sport and sports games. I think throughout my entire life I've probably put more time into FIFA than any other series. I think there's a lot of untapped potential in the genre generally, especially outside the mainstream, and a lot of room for developers to use sport in new and interesting ways. And Golf Story is absolutely a step in the right direction. It seems an obvious and maybe kind of gross sounding sentence, but the game just oozes golf. Everything is golf. In the story, the dialogue, the gameplay, the side quests, nearly every NPC interaction. Golf is used like a tangible resource, and is deftly placed in every facet of the game. The pure ubiquity of the sport throughout the whole experience is fundamentally why it all works as cohesively as it does. Because of this, on top of the stuff we've already discussed in the video, it makes sense why Golf Story has been pretty positively received on the whole, even though it's about golf. It found its identity, as well as its own way of appealing to a broad audience, and as a result, has shown the potential real-world implications of a thoughtfully constructed game. Golf Story breaks through traditionalism and exclusivity and subverts your expectations. If you don't care for golf, I can guarantee you that by the end of this game, you'll care more about golf than you do right now.
So there we are, thank you for watching. And um, personally, I'm holding out for cricket story myself. Most cricket games are naff, so sidebar games, if you're watching, do me a solid. If you're Australian, I know you can do it. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking it and subscribe if you'd like to see more of my content as it comes out, as infrequent as that is. Cheers again, and see you next time round.